Hey there guys, Robbie W1RCP here, and I'm showing how to use VSPE to have Comport emulation. And this allows a user to use two programs using one Comport. And for those of us that are amateur radio operators, if you want to use two loggers to read your Comport of your radio uh, using CIV, then this is the program that you can use. Um, it's $25 from the company that creates it. So we're going to open this program. And the first thing it's going to tell you is that uh, if you just downloaded it, license not found. And I'm not going to use it, but I thought that it would be cool to show you how to use it um, if you need it. It's $25. It's a pretty good deal. So um, we're going to click No to continue. And the screen that comes up looks like this. And you can see that mine is unregistered because I'm not going to use it after this. So what we can do is for my ICOM IC7300, I want two loggers to be able to use it. So what I'm going to do is go to device type, go to splitter, and it shows you that you're going to have a COM port that has a virtual COM port that can be shared with multiple devices. And we're going to click next. Now the COM port for mine is COM7. That is for my ICOM7300. And then we're going to go to settings. And we're going to change this to the settings of the radio, which is 9600. We're not using any DTR or RTS. There's no parity. There are eight, eight bits and one stop bit. And then we're going to click OK. I turned these off because I don't believe they're used. If they are, it will fix it. And then we're going to click Finish. You can select whatever COM port you want. I liked COM10, but since I used that earlier, I'll use COM42 as a good number. So let's go to COM42. Then we'll click Finish. And what we're left with is this is already going. If you wanted to stop emulation, you can click it and then use COM7. Or you hit play and it works. Now, if we wanted to start up, let's start with my AC log. Let's say that N3FJP's AC log wants to read from COM42. Give it just a minute to start up and we will drag this over here so you can see it takes a minute to load because my log is so large in this so this is AC log and we're gonna go to settings go to rig interface And now rig interface looks like this. And what you're going to do, you can see over here in the COM port, you have COM7, which is the radio. If you try that, it's going to tell you it's not going to work. Go to COM42. These settings are already the settings that I use normally because I already had it set up. This can be a problem if you're first setting it up. I would suggest setting it up using the regular COM port and then go back to this program, VSPE, <clears throat> and set that up. You can click test and you'll notice it's pulling what frequency I'm sitting at and the mode. So then you can click done. There's one program that is now pulling from my radio and if I twist it within two seconds it updates the frequency to the frequency that's being used. Alright, so another program that we like to use is SKCC Logger. Some people like to log some things in here if they're not SKCC members. And then some things like to pull from or write their logs into SKCC Logger for the members of the SKCC or Straight Key Century Club. So what we do over here is we go to Options, Configure Radio. And normally this wouldn't work. But what we're going to do is go to COM port 42. All the other settings should be the same. You click open port 
and it should read 7.055, which is where I was. So if I go to 7.057, it shows up there. Then you can close window, and if you do start logging here, it's going to show you your VFO right here. And if I move the VFO, within a few seconds, it should show up right here. So you can do your logging that way as well. And AC Log is still pulling the same information. So that is how to use this particular program, the SPE, which I just minimized and need to go hunt down real quick. There's some other information you could do. There's a lot more. You can click Info. And you can see that apparently there is a, a DTR pinout that is used. Uh, nope, sorry, that's not true or false. That's what pin numbers they are. But we're not using them for this particular program. And then uh, you can look down here and see how much information is being read, which is kind of neat. You can see incoming and outgoing, apparently. Um, let's see. I've never used this, so let's just see what it looks like. Um, let's spin the dial and see what happens. Oh, goodness, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So, that's pretty nifty. Um, if we go look at SKCC Logger, it probably reads a little faster. I'm going to spin the VFO and see what happens. And every time I spin it, it, it sends a whole bunch of information. So, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Uh, you can close that out, and if you don't want to use it, you hit stop. Um, in my case, I'm going to delete it because I'm not going to actually do this, but I wanted to be able to show you guys how this worked. So it's uh, not letting me delete the device because it's in use. And uh, probably because I have a program using it. So there's that. <clears throat> Never tried that before. Alrighty, so I guess if you want to uh, get rid of that information, you can close your logs. Of course, the next time that I open these up, they're going to have a cow um, because that COM port 42 is going to disappear. So that is how to use this particular program. Let's see if it'll let me delete it now. Yep, there you go. So that's how you use this program. Not something for me, but hey, somebody out there may want to have two logs open at the same time. This is a way to do it. Alrighty, guys, this is Rob W1RCP, and I try to keep it short. 73.